Three UCLA basketball players are back home in the U.S. after spending seven days detained in China. Freshman Langelo Ball, Jalen Hill, and Cody Riley arrived last night at Los Angeles International Airport. They were arrested last week on suspicion of shoplifting while in eastern China for a tournament. President Trump claims that he personally asked Chinese President Xi Jinping to intervene during his trip to the country. Well, since the players returned, the president tweeted out, do you think the three UCLA basketball players will say thank you, Mr. President, President Trump? They were headed for 10 years in jail. Well, the players are expected to speak any minute now. When that begins, we're going to bring it to you live. And joining us now, Bill Ryder, CBS Sports writer and host of Ryder Than You, CBS Sports writer. And uh, thank you very much for joining us, Bill. Well, I want to ask you, what do you think we're going to hear from this press conference? Well, I think we're going to get some insight on the big question, at least right now in college basketball, and that is what is the punishment going to be from UCLA, from their conference on these three young men who didn't just at least allegedly shoplift in China, but created an international incident and brought a lot of pressure to bear on that university at a time when college basketball is under attack from people who feel like it doesn't reflect the best parts of sports, mm -hmm. the best parts of higher education. It'll be very interesting to see what Steve Alford and that uh, athletic department decides to do in terms of punishment, particularly since Leangelo Ball is a very famous person whose brother is a superstar, who's a pretty good basketball player, and whose younger brother, who will go to UCLA if he's uh, eligible, presumably would play at UCLA if this punishment isn't harsh enough that his dad, LeVar, who's been known to do some crazy things, mm -hmm. says, you know what, forget you guys, we're not bringing them. It's going to be fascinating. Is there a sense of what punishment you expect the players to potentially face? Will there be any? I think it could be wide ranging. I mean, it is not a secret that in college sports that if you're accused of shoplifting and it's under the radar, it's just in local newspapers, it's not an international incident, that uh, this can be a slap on the wrist. It could be anywhere from a slap on the wrist to a very severe punishment up to and including not playing multiple, multiple games. I went ahead now to the news conference with these three UCLA players. It's starting now in Los Angeles. Let's listen in. I feel terrible. And I'm sorry to everybody who I've let down. With that being said, I take full responsibility for the mistake I have made, shoplifting. I know that this goes beyond me letting my school down, but I've let the entire country down. Before, before I thank everybody who worked so incredibly hard to help us return home safely, I want to thank the Chinese police and the government for taking care of us and treating us well during our time there. To President Trump, and the United States government, thank you for taking the time to intervene on our behalf. We really appreciate you helping us out. Thank you to all the PAC-12 representatives for all of your time and support. Thank you, Dan Guerrero, for sticking by our sides and doing whatever you could to help us through this. Thank you, Chris Carlson, for taking the time out of your schedule to stay with us the entire time and guide us every step of the way. To Doug Erickson, thank you for also staying. To my teammates, thank you for being there for us throughout the process. You guys mean so much to me. To Coach Alfred, Coach Tyus, Coach Roussard, Coach Grace, thank you for all of your support. You guys have always believed in me, not only as a basketball player, but also as a person. I'm sorry for letting you down. Lastly, to my family, my mom, my mom and dad, you guys have raised me to be smart and always make the right choices. You never left my side, and it hurts me the most that I disappointed and embarrassed you. To my younger brother, Ben, this is not the example that I want to set for you. But from here on out, I promise that I will be the best role model I can be to look up, for you to look up to. I've been looking forward to being the UCLA Bruins since I was young. The alumni here have set such a high standard for both academically and athletically. And as a UCLA student athlete, I'm disappointed in myself that I failed to live up to that. I can only hope that my actions, my words, my hard work in the weeks to come will prove to my coaches, my teammates, and our fans that I am more capable of meeting that high standard. Away from the court, <clears throat> I'll work especially hard in the classroom to show that I can be an outstanding representative of this incredible university, a place that is so, port so important to many people around the world. Again, thank you to everybody who has been there and expressed concern for me and my safety this past week. I can assure you that I will never do anything again to jeopardize UCLA's reputation 
and as my own. Go Bruins. Thank you. I'd like to start off by saying sorry for stealing from the stores in China. Uh, I didn't exercise my best judgment, and I was wrong for that. I apologize to my family, my coaches, my teammates, and UCLA for letting so many people down. I also apologize to the people of China for causing them so much trouble. Excuse for me. I don't feel sorry for myself, and I've learned my lesson from this big mistake, and I'm 110% sure that I'll not make a bad decision like this one again. i also like everyone to know that this does not who define who I am. My family raised me better than that, and I'm going to make myself a better person from here on out. I have the utmost respect for the Chinese police department as well, and I'd like to thank them for treating me so respectfully, even after I made a stupid decision. Uh, I'd like to thank Chris Carlson and Doug Erickson for staying with us and just helping us out while we were in China <clears throat> and taking care of us. I'm grateful for this UCLA team that stood strong beside us and made it possible for me to be sitting here in front of you all today. I respect and admire all the hard work that they put in to get us back to the United States. I would also like to thank President Trump and the United States government for the help that they provided as well. I'm grateful to be back home, and I'll never make a mistake like this again. I'm extremely sorry for those who I let down, but I'm also very thankful for all the help, love, and support that they provided. And I take full responsibility for my actions, and I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Angelo. First off, I would like to apologize to um, all the fans who support UCLA, because I feel like my actions have hurt them the most. It hurts me because I can see the pain that I caused them. I apologize to my teammates, my coaches, and my family because of how much negative attention that I put on them that they do not deserve. I'm sorry for shoplifting. What I did was stupid. There's just no other way to put it, and I'm not that type of person. I hope that this mistake will not define me as a person, but it shows that I have messed up and can learn from it. I don't want to be known for this dumb mistake. I want to be known for my respectfulness and my love and passion for the game of basketball. This event has taught me a lot, and it has changed me in a way that I can't explain. I have so much more respect for the people around me, from our coaches and staff to the fans who live for UCLA. I have also strengthened my relationship with God throughout this time. Without him, I would be nothing. To all the fans out there watching, I hope that you can forgive me. I hope that you can forgive my stupid childish actions. I have learned my lesson, and I hope that I can earn back the love and support that our passionate fans bring to this program. I would like to thank everyone involved in this whole ordeal. Thank you to Chris, Doug, Gloria, and Jerry for staying with us the whole time. Thank you to the police department, which treated us very well. Thank you to the Pac-12 and the whole UCLA community that helped us the whole way. And thank you to the United States government and President Trump for your efforts to bring us home. First of all, I'd um, like to acknowledge that there's been significant um, public and media interest in the situation in China. And I want to thank everyone here for respecting that we cannot say much over the past week. Our priority throughout this entire situation was making sure that Jello, Jalen, and Cody got home safely. And we were informed that anything that's said during the process could have jeopardized a successful return to Los Angeles. We are grateful that they've safely returned home and have been able to reconnect with their family, their friends, and their teammates. I can't thank enough the incredible folks uh, here at UCLA, at the Pac-12, and even President Trump and his administration for the nonstop efforts to resolve this situation. To say that our young men are incredibly fortunate 
to have this kind of support system that's around them is certainly an understatement. From the UCLA Office of Legal Affairs to Chancellor Block to Dan Guerrero, from our senior staff in athletics, Chris Carlson, Doug Erickson, Dwayne Broussard, my entire staff, and others on the ground with us in China, this was truly been a team effort. Everyone focused on the best interest of our young men. I especially want to recognize Chris for an unbelievable commitment for him to stay with our guys. Gloria Navarrez from our Pac-12 conference, who was just simply incredible throughout everything. As a coach, you recruit these young men for a long time, and you get to know them very, very well during the process. These are good young men who have exercised an inexcusable lapse, lapse of judgment. And now they have to live with that. They let a lot of people down in the process. I'm extremely disappointed in their actions. You just heard them apologize. I would like to again apologize on their behalf to the chancellor, to Dan, to the Bruin family. These young men are going to have to prove their words and actions that this isn't who they are and that they will not let their identity be defined by this incident. I know Jello, Cody, and Jalen well, and I'm confident that they have already begun to use this experience as a life lesson. They're going to have to regain the trust of this athletic department, of this university, and because this was such a high profile international matter, the trust of the general public. Trust is earned, it isn't just given. These three young men will remain suspended indefinitely from our program as we work through the review process with the university's Office of Student Conduct. During that indefinite suspension, they will not travel with the team, nor will they suit up for home games. At some point, they may be permitted to join team workouts, practices, and meetings, but that timeline has yet to be determined. They will have to earn their way back. They will cooperate fully with the university review of this matter, and will use this time to focus on their academics. My expectation is that they will work hard to demonstrate why they deserve to be a part of this program. I'd also like to express my gratitude to the other young men in our program who represented UCLA the right way during our trip and were able to put aside the distractions of travel, learning and enjoying a foreign country, while also defeating a very good Georgia Tech basketball team. The experience was memorable and the Chinese people were such gracious hosts everywhere that we went. As the head coach of our program, it's my responsibility to move us forward and we'll do just that by focusing on basketball and the young men suiting up tonight against Central Arkansas. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. And finally, we have UCLA Athletic Director Dan Graham. Thank you. As Steve mentioned, we're very disappointed in the conduct of our three student athletes. On what should have been a very positive, memorable trip for our entire team and for our university, their irresponsible actions overshadow that opportunity. They've taken the first step here today, as you've seen, apologizing for the hurt and pain that they've caused the UCLA community and accepting full responsibility. In my meeting with them in Hangzhou, their expression of remorse, regret, sadness, and embarrassment was as genuine as it gets. They know they made a huge mistake, and as you can see, they're deeply sorry for it. To echo Steve, it's my hope that these three young men are not defined by this one instance, but rather by their efforts to restore our trust in them. Their actions in China are contrary to our true Bruin values in UCLA athletics, and quite frankly, are unacceptable. As a young man in Steve knowledge, there were so many people at UCLA, both in Westwood and in China, as well as the Pac-12 conference, who were instrumental in getting us through this challenging time. Let me just express my gratitude to everyone involved. I also want to add my sincere thanks to Chancellor Block for his resolute support throughout, as well as to acknowledge the efforts of President Trump and his administration, including White House Chief of Staff General Kelly, who took the time to call our students uh, over the weekend. I also want to express my sincere apology to Alibaba and the Pac-12 Conference, who worked collaboratively to make this incredible cultural exchange possible, the wonderful people of China, Georgia Tech, in our UCLA community for the disruption and the negative attention the students' actions brought upon this extraordinary trip. I recognize there are many questions yet to be answered about what transpired in China over the last nine days 
and I appreciate the media and the job that you have to do. My statement today will provide some answers to those questions, uh, though not likely all of them. While the students having just returned last night, we're continuing to review certain aspects of the matter. Some fans, alumni, and members of the media have wondered why we remained silent during this situation. Essentially, as you might imagine, and it was indicated by Steve, the sensitive nature of trying to bring our students home safely demanded that we stay silent. Let me start now by saying that prior to leaving the United States and again while in China, Coach Alfred met with the team and reminded them all of the expectations and the responsibilities that go along with representing UCLA. He and his staff did this as a means proactively to try to prevent a negative situation of any kind. On Monday, November 6th, first full day of the trip, the group had a phenomenal experience visiting the Alibaba campus where the team had an opportunity to tour the campus and to hear from Joe Tsai, the co-founder and executive vice chairman of the Alibaba group. Later that evening, the students were given 90 minutes of free time, if you will, to explore the town of Hangzhou or simply to relax. Jello, Jalen, and Cody used that time to visit several stores that were adjacent to the hotel. It was at that time that they took the items from three of those stores without paying for them. They then returned to the team hotel with those items. The following morning, November 7th, the police arrived at the team hotel and began to interview several members of the Georgia Tech team and the UCLA basketball team as they attempted to identify which students were involved in the thefts. In addition to interviewing several students, police also searched bags both in the hotel and on the team bus. Within a few hours, they identified Jello, Jalen, and Cody as the likely suspects and escorted them to a local police station. Associate Head Coach Dwayne Broussard, Pac-12 Associate Commissioner Gloria Navarez were able to go with them, and Steve Alford and Associate Athletic Director Chris Carlson followed shortly thereafter. I was notified by the arrest of our UCLA personnel on the ground while I was mid-flight to Shanghai. The Chancellor, the UCLA Office of Legal Affairs, and other appropriate university personnel and UC administrators were quickly brought into the loop, which began work on securing both legal counsel and information which at that time, of course, was rather sparse. Following the arrest, the students remained in custody, undergoing questioning by police before being released on bail early in the morning of November 8th. The total bail amount was approximately 2,200 U.S. dollars. As part of the conditions of the release, the students had to surrender their passports and agree to travel restrictions. They were not required to remain in the hotel, though we made that decision out of abundance of caution and respect for the process. Bail in question has since been refunded by the Chinese authorities. The UCLA Office of Legal Affairs, in concert with the PAC-12 Conference and legal experts in China, worked to identify local outside counsel in Hangzhou to represent the three student athletes. The university then requested and subsequently received authorization from the parents of the students to engage legal representation on their behalf. Regarding the issue of the expenses that were incurred over the last nine days, UCLA provided the necessary resources to secure the timely release and safe return of the student athletes. We now have the task of working to reconcile who is ultimately responsible for the costs incurred in addition to addressing any NCAA implications. When the rest of the team departed for Shanghai to continue their trip in preparation for the game against Georgia Tech, Chris Carlson and Gloria Navarre stayed behind in Hangzhou with the three students. Over the ensuing days, our staff and students fully cooperated with the local authorities who were gracious throughout the entire matter, in an attempt, obviously, to resolve the situation. I made a visit to the hotel on Friday to check on everyone and to reassure the students that many people were working on their behalf and doing everything possible to try to get them home. From those meetings, I was confident that the students were safe and being treated with the highest level of respect. On Saturday, when the rest of the team and the traveling party returned home, two UCLA administrative staff members, Associate Athletic Director Chris Carlson and Doug Erickson remained in China with the student athletes. We left with the belief that substantial progress was being made to achieve a satisfactory outcome. To that end, on Tuesday in Shanghai, the local authorities confirmed that the student athletes could leave the country. They did so at 9 p.m. Shanghai time, 5 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesday, and of course arrived last night at LAX around 5 p.m. When the charges against the students were ultimately withdrawn, while the charges with the students were ultimately withdrawn, Jalen Cody and Jello, of course, did admit to breaking the law. As Steve noted, the three student athletes have been suspended indefinitely from the men's basketball program as we continue to review 
the matter in collaboration with the Office of Student Conduct as we do with all cases related to misconduct for students. We will work together and prudently come to some resolution on this matter in short order. I know there are still questions to be answered. It is my hope that in the coming weeks, as we learn more, we'll be able to share additional information with all of you. As difficult as this time period has been for all of us who love UCLA so dearly, I'm confident in the resiliency of the UCLA community and the Bruin family, and we will continue to move forward together. Thank you. There you have it, UCLA press conference there with head coach and athletic director of the UCLA team. We just heard from the players there. I want to bring in Bill Ryder. He's back, CBS sports writer and host of Ryder the New. Okay, Bill, I'm kind of surprised by this press conference. Me too. What do you make of it? I think it was a very well done press conference. I thought that they came off as really authentic. It's always hard to know, but I think that's really important, both from the international yeah. relations crisis and really just for fans in UCLA and around college basketball who wanted some an answers and mm -hmm. wanted to see whether or not these young men felt guilty for what they'd done. And that's the other takeaway. They did this. The mm -hmm. allegations were real. The reports were accurate. Mm -hmm. They certainly had evidence. And to hear them admit that they uh, committed this crime in China, we did it. I thought was fascinating. I was also really surprised the fact that not only did they own it and say we did it, and we're sorry and we apologize to our family but from the get-go out of the gate they said we apologize to the people of China we apologize to the stores we shoplifted from we apologize to the police of China why do you think they went out of their way to specifically address the Chinese yeah making calls and talking to sources since the story developed there was a real sense that these three young men were in a lot of danger real danger of spending mm -hmm. three to seven years in a Chinese prison because the Chinese government and the Chinese people are very sensitive to the idea that they're not respected on the international stage mm -hmm. and the internal politics of China the sense that foreigners can come over including Americans of course and not be held to the same standards as Chinese citizens and that was seen as a big hurdle for these young men to make it home and obviously they understood that and they they were addressing a big part of their apology to the Chinese government and to the Chinese citizens, understanding that this could have been a really bad situation because of the sensitivity of three young men who are very high profile, basically getting off with a crime that wouldn't have been afforded the same sort of opportunities if you were a Chinese citizen. While they didn't serve prison time, uh, they, they did post a, a $2,200 bail, which they said got refunded. But they're suspended indefinitely. Are you surprised by that punishment? I think it's the right decision, but I hate to say that it is sometimes surprising in college athletics when people come to the right conclusion that adversely, adversely impacts their, their program, and it will. I mean, Leangelo Ball is the more famous player, mm -hmm. and he scored 11 points in his first game, but the other two young men are very good freshmen. This is a pretty good basketball team. It's the right thing. And Dan Guerrero, the athletic director, Steve Alford, the head coach, they came to the right conclusion. Now, I'll say this. It sounds like we're at the right place now. The right answer is not to lift the indefinite suspension mm -hmm. in three days or seven days. So We don't know how long it'll last. Right. And the fact they're not going to practice or participate or even be able to suit up, I think that's a real punishment. And if it lasts some time, I think they did the right thing. Mm. And you also said it's very rare, you were telling me as this press conference was going on, to actually see the players come forward. It's usually the coaches? Yeah, it is. And I've covered a lot of programs where young men have gotten into trouble or been accused of various things, gotten into car accidents, whatever yeah. it may be. And very rarely do the young men talk. Often, if they're freshmen, as is the case here, head coaches across the country will not make them available to the media. Usually the head coach will come out. He'll do a brief press conference. And then by rule, he will say, it's the last time I'm answering questions about this, no matter how many times reporters try in the months ahead. So to see these three young men yet mm -hmm. answer the questions themselves, speak themselves, uh, that's very different than what you usually see in these situations. I'm wondering what you think about the fact when you look over the horizon of NCAA, the fact that there's these corruption and bribery charges. How do you think that weighed into this? I think it absolutely weighed into it. I think UCLA, like a lot of universities, just trying to find a balance between having the tradition of athletic success that has certainly defined them, but it's also an excellent university. And there's a lot of pressure, especially in Los Angeles, from people who aren't really into sports and don't care about sports, that the athletic department not embarrass the school mm -hmm. and the academic uh, reputation and its graduates and that was before three basketball players created an international incident I think that uh, I think that had a huge impact boy that was just a fascinating press conference to watch and to see the strengths that the lengths they went to getting local hired attorneys and, and exactly what they did uh, Bill Ryder thank you very much you for bet. joining us